It's a question that has been debated for decades now. Does water draining from a container of some sort, like a bathtub, always drain in a clockwise direction in the Southern Hemisphere, and does it always drain in an anti-clockwise direction in the Northern Hemisphere? This water is draining clockwise, so, according to popular belief, I must be in the Southern Hemisphere. And in fact I am, I'm in Australia. But, one draining bathtub in one location doesn't prove anything. We know that the winds in low pressure weather systems, like tropical cyclones as they're called in Australia, they're called hurricanes in the Americas, do in fact always rotate clockwise in the Southern Hemisphere and they always rotate anti-clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere. The reason for this is what's called the Coriolis effect, and it has to do with the fact that the Earth is spinning. The Coriolis effect was named after French scientist Gaspard Gustave de Coriolis. It is the best French accent I can do, who studied, en who studied energy flow in moving systems. But does the Coriolis effect apply to water draining from a fairly small container like a bathtub or a bathroom basin or a container with a hole in it. Some people say that the Coriolis effect is far too small to be measured with small bodies of water and that if we do see any swirling, it has more to do with either the shape of the container or with the movement that the water already had before it started draining. They say that your location has nothing to do with it. So to find out the truth, I'm going to perform the experiment with the same container, literally exactly the same container, both here in the Southern Hemisphere, in Melbourne, Australia, and in the Northern Hemisphere, in Paris, the capital of France. Our trip will also take us to Singapore, which is as close to the equator as I'm going to get, on the ground anyway, to see if being close to the equator makes any difference. Singapore is one degree north of the equator. Melbourne, by the way, is 38 degrees south of the equator and Paris is 49 degrees north of the equator. Right now I'm in Melbourne, about 38 degrees south of the equator. This is the equipment I'm going to use. Two containers, one of which I've drilled a hole into, two rulers, some blue tack and some small pieces of cork. For each experiment, I'll plug the hole in the container with a bit of blue tack sit it on top of another container using two rulers and then fill it with water. I'll let it sit still for a minimum of five minutes so that the water can come to a complete stop and then I'll reach underneath the container to remove the blue tack. This will allow me to set the water draining without actually touching the water. I'll let the water drain for about two minutes before placing a small piece of cork into the water. The cork isn't big enough to disrupt any currents that have been established. It took a total of about three and a half minutes for the water to drain completely. After each trial, I just poured the water from the bottom container back into the top container and started again. So here you can see in real time, over about a minute or so, what happened. We performed the experiment at least a dozen times in Melbourne, six times at this location, obviously I'm only showing four of them here, and a heap of times at home. And in every single trial, the water ended up swirling clockwise as it drained out of the hole. Sometimes the cork kind of spun out towards the edge of the container and stuck to the side, so I just threw another cork in. As you can see, the swirling wasn't very fast, but it was definitely clockwise every time. I suppose it's always a good thing when you do an experiment and you get the same results every time. After all these trials, I was beginning to think that the people who say that the Coriolis effect doesn't apply to small bodies of water like this one, have never actually tried the experiment. However, I'm guessing that if the water drains out too slowly, like a drop at a time, then there wouldn't be enough movement to establish any kind of spiral current. And if it drains out too quickly through a really large hole, then there won't be enough time for any spiral current to form. Two litres or so of water draining in three to four minutes though seems to be about right to establish, as you can see, a clockwise current flow. It's now been one and a half minutes of real-time footage since I dropped the corks in and about three and a half minutes since the water actually started draining. So it's pretty consistent. As water drains out of this container, it always ends up swirling clockwise, which is the same as the way that winds swirl in tropical cyclones in the Southern Hemisphere. What happens though, if I perform the same experiment with exactly the same equipment in the Northern Hemisphere? 
Well, let's go to Paris and find out. The theory of the Coriolis effect, which I'll explain using water draining, is that if you have a large container of water, a very large container of water in this case, touching the North Pole at one end and the equator at the other end, it spins around as the Earth turns, but the water near the equator is moving faster than the water near the pole. This is quite an unusual map, but it shows what the Northern Hemisphere looks like from above. Now, if you pull the plug, the water starts draining inwards. However, near the pole, the water moves inwards, in this case towards Europe, from kind of a standing start. But as the Earth spins underneath it, it appears to move to the west, that is, to the left on the map, and ends up somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. The water near the equator, though, is already moving at high speed from west to east. So when the plug is pulled and it starts moving northwards towards the drain hole, the easterly movement that the water already had combines with the northerly movement towards the drain hole, so the water moves over the surface of the earth at an angle between north and east, so it moves to the right of the drain hole. Just to illustrate, if I throw a ball from a stationary trolley, it will just move in the direction that I throw it. Pretty obvious. However, if I throw the ball from a moving trolley, at right angles to the direction that the trolley is moving, it will move diagonally across the screen because the speed I give it combines with the speed that it already has, which means that it moves away from the camera and towards the right. So back to the water in our large container, the water closer to the equator that moves to the north when the plug is pulled is also flung to the east because the earth is spinning and it ends up moving at an angle between north and east. The two motions from the north and from the south combine and the water forms an anti-clockwise current. The Coriolis effect is the name given to this apparent shifting of an object's movement due to the Earth's rotation. So in the northern hemisphere, the theory is that water should drain and that winds will flow in cyclones in an anti-clockwise spiral, but if you're in the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite because you're kind of upside down with respect to the northern hemisphere. Okay, so here I am in Paris in front of the Eiffel Tower. I have the same two buckets that I had in Melbourne. I'm gonna fill this one up with water, let it drain into the other one, and then see if in fact the water spins differently here in the Northern Hemisphere compared to what it did in Melbourne in the Southern Hemisphere. Let's begin. Now, just in case you're wondering, Liakos Educational Media didn't travel all the way to Paris just to film water draining out of a container. We actually went to England and Greece as well to shoot scenes for new episodes of our famous Shedding Light series of science education programs, which are aimed at high school aged students. I'm actually a science teacher, and I think that videos are really effective teaching resources. When they're combined with fantastic student activity sheets, they're even more effective. So if you're a science teacher or a student, visit our website at liakoseducationalmedia.com to have a look at them. Let's see what happened in Paris. I set it up exactly as I did in Melbourne, of course. After letting the water drain undisturbed for the first two minutes or so, I dropped a small piece of cork into the water and just kept filming it so that you can watch it in real time. And I think the results are pretty clear. We performed six trials in Paris, three near the Eiffel Tower, which you're watching now, and three in our hotel room. And as you can see, we got consistent anti-clockwise swirling. So that seems pretty conclusive. In Melbourne, in the Southern Hemisphere, the water drains out the hole clockwise, just like it should. Whereas here in the Northern Hemisphere, in Paris, the water drains out anti-clockwise. So, according to my experiments, if still water far away from the equator starts draining from a round container, the Coriolis effect is strong enough to make it start spinning. I chose a round container and drilled the hole in the middle of the container to eliminate unnecessary variables. But bathtubs and basins are not usually round, so that might complicate the way water flows out of them. Also, the hole isn't usually in the middle. It might be on the equator side, the opposite side, or somewhere in between. And that might also be a factor. I'll need another trip to do more research. I also suspect that if you have to put your hand in the water to remove the plug, then the movement you give the water will produce inconsistent results. The Coriolis effect may not be strong enough to overcome the movement that the water already has. Let's now see what happens to draining water in Singapore.
I'm now on the way back from Europe. I'm in Singapore. I'm at the Singapore International Airport. And the Singapore International Airport is only one degree north of the equator. I'm going to do the same experiment again. Same buckets, same holiday, same pork, same rumor, same everything. And we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, we were only able to perform three trials in Singapore because our plane made only a brief stop in Singapore on the way back to Australia. Our shots here aren't super steady because I had to pack the tripod into the suitcase since you're not allowed to carry tripods into the cabin of the plane. The containers and the camera though fitted easily into our carry-on bags. Now part of the scientific method when you're trying to establish relationships between variables is that you can only change one variable at a time to see what effect it has on another variable. That's why I decided to use exactly the same container and exactly the same setup. The only variable I changed was my location and I can now say with confidence that changing your location from Melbourne in the Southern Hemisphere to Paris in the Northern Hemisphere definitely affects the direction in which water will drain out of a container. I suppose I could have taken my whole bathtub, but that would have been a little harder. Now in Singapore, as you can see, there doesn't seem to be any swirling of the water at all. I'm not sure why I threw two pieces of cork in on two of the trials. I'm going to blame severe sleep deprivation. But it seems to me that the Coriolis effect near the equator is very small. Certainly too small to have any effect at all on the water in this container as it drains. So water seems to drain clockwise in the southern hemisphere, anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere, and without swirling down the hole near the equator. And now I'm back in Melbourne, Australia, and I can say that even though the container we used was quite small, the results are clear. The Coriolis effect definitely does apply even to small bodies of draining water, not just to tropical cyclones. Also, the Coriolis effect isn't some constant value in the southern hemisphere, which then drops to zero at the equator, which then becomes the opposite of that constant value in the northern hemisphere. The Coriolis effect starts at zero at the equator and then gradually gets stronger and stronger as you move further and further away from the equator. I've seen videos of locals living in countries near the equator showing tourists that when the water drains out of a container 10 metres south of the equator, it drains clockwise. But then when they repeat the experiment 10 metres north of the equator, the water drains out anti-clockwise. I suspect that they set the water swirling themselves, either with the way they pour the water into the container or with the way they remove the plug. Because as I said, the Coriolis effect doesn't just switch on when you move away from the equator, it gradually gets stronger and stronger. Interestingly, tropical cyclones never get within about 5 degrees of the equator. This map shows the track of every tropical storm and cyclone over a seven decade period. A tropical storm is declared a tropical cyclone and given a name, Tropical Cyclone Debbie for example, when the sustained wind speeds reach about 120 kilometers per hour. The blue lines represent storms and the yellow, orange and red lines represent tropical cyclones, with the red lines showing the most severe ones. The Coriolis effect just doesn't seem to have much of an effect near the equator, even on the wind. So it's probably not surprising that water draining out of a container near the equator doesn't start to spin either. Now when I first started experimenting, I didn't know what would happen, but according to our experiments, the Coriolis effect is strong enough to make initially still water that is allowed to drain out of a round container swirl in a particular direction depending on which hemisphere it's in. That doesn't mean though that water draining out of bathtubs will always rotate the same way depending on which hemisphere they're in because there are more variables involved with bathtubs. Feel free to try the experiment yourself wherever you are and let me know your results. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please visit the Liakos Educational Media website for more great teaching resources. See you next time.